Hello and welcome to beautiful Amelia Island, Florida, but more importantly, welcome to the Lucid Air. Now this is a vehicle we've been covering from the beginning. I've yet to go for a ride in one. I'm so excited because today is the day finally we get to go for a ride in the Lucid Air Grand Touring. It's a really cool car, over 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, huge focus on efficiency, luxury, and of course styling, and we get to go experience it firsthand. Let's do it. You join us cruising out of this unassuming neighborhood here in Florida where I assume no Lucid has ever been before. Not on this street. <laughs> <laughs> this is Derek Jenkins and uh, what do you do for Lucid, Derek? So I'm the VP of design here at Lucid. So this is really your baby. And well, it's my team's baby, but yeah, yeah it's certainly a, a personal uh, honor to have been working on this project, that's for sure. It's a wildly cool car. Now, uh, for those who aren't aware, we've done full walk around tours of the Lucid Air in different trims on our Inside EVs YouTube channel. You can just go back and watch those. However, now we're getting an opportunity to drive it in one of the coolest places. We're just outside of Jacksonville, Florida at the Amelia Island Concourse d'Elegance. Yes. And we begged and pleaded you to take us for a ride. So thank you so much for taking us out. My pleasure. This is the exciting part of this project to have the chance to share it with people like yourself. And what exact version of the air are we in right now? So we are in a Grand Touring. Um, it's in stellar white, and this has the Santa Cruz interior. Package. Which is, so every car has sort of a, a, not just interior color, but an interior theme. That's right. So um, when we were developing our, our color programs, we were really looking for inspiration, and we settled on this idea of, like, locations around California. So we chose Santa Cruz for this interior package. We have a Mojave, which is our black interior. Um, we have... Uh, Tahoe, inspired by Lake Tahoe, uh, Santa Monica, and uh, we have another one coming called Big Basin. That, oh, uh, what's that going to look like? Yeah, that's kind of a taupe, okay. uh, tan color, very classy yeah. and uh, beautiful. I really love the Santa Monica trim. I just I think it's super yeah. energetic and it yeah. keeps you happy and very ocean vibey. That's right. Yeah, and really it has love the that. Uh, eucalyptus wood. This yeah. is our walnut. So this is walnut. Um, and it's yeah. open pour, too. It's open pour, trying to get us nice of an authentic wood quality to it. Really yeah, and important. we were talking about this before because um, Peter Rawlinson, your CEO, is an awesome guy who is obsessed with efficiency yeah. and eking out every last ounce of juice. But the problem is for the end user, when you drive an EV, you don't really get that sense. So yeah. what you have to bring to the table here is how do you have the car have an identity, a personality, or even a soul That's in right. this case? Yeah. And so what approach did you take when designing this vehicle to have these tactile materials, this Alcantara, this leather? Where, how did you start by choosing the material choices? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, you know, we wanted to bring up the kind of human aspect to Lucid, and it's obviously we're dealing with super high-tech kind of experiences, but balancing that out with kind of human interaction, touch and feel, the look of the car, elegance. And so from day one, that idea of, of kind of awesome technology and the balance of this human experience, we came up with this notion we call heart and mind, right? Mm -hmm. And so we've got to have awesome tech, but you have to have awesome experience to go with it. And so that like philosophy kind of blankets everything that we do, um, whether it's the exterior design, the look and feel and flow of the, the car and the lines of the car, the lighting on the exterior, the glass cabin, and then on the interior, it's all about the materiality, you know, this inspiration behind California, having a strong sense of sustainability, but keeping really nice material, stitching wood, bright work, the screens, everything's gotta have that kind of nice tactile feel about it. And I think that's appropriate for, for the segment we're trying to reach. Totally agree. You know, I am uh, one of those EV nerds where I want to geek out about the thousand volt pack architecture right. that, you know, the motors are capable of sustaining big power well past 40, 50 miles an hour, which we got to experience on the way over, which was just mind blowingly <laughs> quick. Uh, and, and that's coming from someone who spent so much time in performance Tesla vehicles. This thing just rips at speed, uh, which was amazing. 
Um, but you know, it does give someone the sense that like this is a quality product that's been holistically thought through to provide not just a transportation from A to B, but an entire ownership experience because you have really cool user interface, you have great app connectivity, and then my personal favorite is the charging speed of this vehicle. Yes. So the peak advertised DC charging speed is about 300 kilowatts. Right. Um, you don't have to say anything, but it's going to be, you know, it just feels like it's a little underrated. And so everything's going to be just a bit more. And, you know, in terms of a road trip, you're going to be able to keep that peak charging speed, not just for a couple seconds either. That's going to stay relatively deep into the pack, which is going to make this the ultimate cannonball car. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> yes, I had this discussion with Alex yes. yesterday. <laughs> the same exact discussion. Yep, so Timon and I, we hold the record in the Taycan because uh, we wanted to prove so that you don't awesome. need a Tesla to do it. Yep. And we did it in a Taycan because we knew when the Lucid came around, this was going to hold the record. <laughs> Let's hope so. You know, we awesome. can't formally endorse that, of but course. have at it. That's I just I might have say. to loan a car and drop it off on the other <laughs> side of the country. It. That's what you need to do. You Need to do it. Right. So, uh, you know, there's just so many cool, cool things you can do with this car. Now, of course, we're riding and driving, and we haven't even spoken much about the ride and drive, and that's because there hasn't been anything notably annoying. The first thing I notice when I get into a car and such in a lucky position where I get to evaluate, you know, 150 cars a year roughly, mm -hmm. I'm in and out of stuff, where it, all of the negatives hit me first. Sure. I'm like, okay, that impact was pretty harsh. Yeah. That NVH problem here, that engine noise or transmission shift, and it's just seamlessly transporting us into the background, which is so nice. Yeah, there's been, a, uh, you know, as you can imagine, throughout the de development process, there's been a lot of trial and error to work work it to this point, get the cars refined um, and drivable and usable as possible. And you know, I think that's. That's been that's been part of the process. We've had, fortunately, the time to really develop it right. Peter Rollinson, Eric Bach are yep. obsessive on these topics. It really is a relentless thing, and there's still improvements going on as we speak. Sure. You know, this, you know, truth be told, this car is not there yet. Okay. So it's gonna get better. So, so what needs to know. happen? It, not necessarily to this particular car, but as like, what's the path to production at this point? Is it software fine tuning now that the hardware is kind of baked in and you're good there, or what? What needs to happen? It's a combination of everything. We're still going through um, a whole range of craftsmanship topics to improve and refine and tighten up gaps and and trim, fit, and finish small things like that. Um, software will continue to update. We do do. It almost daily software update, oh, uh, yeah. updates to so UX. quick iterations, right? But now. also in, in drivability, you know, still fine tuning region, still, still fine tuning brake feel. Um, so that, all of that work, it's still fine tuning and efficiency topics. So all of that work is ongoing, you know. Um, but, but in terms of the drivetrain, the feel of this car, it is very production representative. It's just gonna be those incremental tweaks that happen between now and when we deliver cars in the second half of this year. The craziest thing for me is I'm looking over at the gauge cluster and we have less than half battery capacity and 219 <laughs> miles remaining. <laughs> That's nice. It's very reassuring. You it's know? just <laughs> like, how can you even go that far on yeah, a charge? Yeah. It's, you know, I think Peter Rawlinson used yeah, the term range Yeah, that's actually more than some uh, uh, car, yeah. well-known electric cars. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, from, from my side, that is really a barrier that's yet to be broken as and, far as this car can go. And that's part of the mission. You know, we talk about our mission to advance sustainable transportation um, through electric cars. And, you know, it's all about eliminating every shred of doubt that a particular consumer might have about, you know, transitioning to, to EV. And, and the range topic's a big one for people. You range know? topic's a big one. And, you know, I heard those electric cars are really slow and kind of doggy off the line. So, you know, what did you do for performance in something like this? Right. So, I mean, obviously this car is geared around being just a mind-blowing touring product. You know, it's a low-slung vehicle. We're actually lower than most sedans um, in the segment. Yeah. Um, it's got a nice stance. The car has tremendous traction, incredible handling, and rather poise. And of course, you know, all the technology that goes into being able to do those kind of really powerful sprints, you know? Right. And it's not just about zero to 40 or zero to 60 for that matter. It keeps going, it keeps pulling. And yeah. that's really about the delivery of the torque um, throughout the range. It's uh, also a really high RPM drivetrain 
that allows us to maintain that power up into higher speeds. And yeah, and you can go such a high RPM on the drivetrain because you have really good inverter technology Absolutely. that can keep up with switching the poles the that, whole way around. That's correct. And all of our all of our drivetrain technology is proprietary to Lucid. It's all developed in house, made in Arizona. And uh, you that's know, amazing. It's, it's it's really one of our biggest sources of, of pride for the brand because we believe that owning that core technology is what can truly get you to kind of EV excellence, you know? Totally agree. And while this isn't the best place to demonstrate performance capabilities, I hope at some point we're able to take Lucid Air, maybe even Dream Edition, to a drag strip or some sort of track to just demolish anything that pulls up <laughs> next to it. Because it's, uh, from my perspective, maybe we can juice it a little bit here. Yeah, just insane. Sure. Yeah, it's that's good. staggering. My, I mean, like, I've been in tons of fast EVs and nothing, you know, everything pulls that hard off the line. Yeah. That's not, you know, you know, Turbo S Taycan, Model S P100D launches hard. Taycan still pulls hard at speed, but this is a whole nother feeling. And part of it's also because this is much more of a luxurious car. Yes. You can feel it kind of lift up and get up on plane, if you will, yeah. when you yeah. go. It's it really cool. Really kind of it just launches, it lurches out, you know? It's I know, it's like we're spinning the earth feeling. backwards. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, cool, I really appreciate this ride. I think, you know, from, from my seat, what I'm getting is we're not even in a production car, but it feels quality, it feels extremely well put together, it's unbelievably stupidly fast. <laughs> And it looks the part, and it feels the part, so uh -huh. it, it is hilarious. It's stupid how fast it's it awesome. is. <laughs> I love it. Well, thanks for the ride opportunity. Really Pleasure, appreciate man. it. Thank and, you for uh, coming out. And, yeah. uh, I can't wait to get you get you behind the wheel as soon as we possibly can. Yeah, and some wild hardware here, right? Some amazing cars to take inspiration from. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. It is cool. Well, thanks for watching another episode of Inside EVs. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.